just kind of scratching over the surface as to trying to introduce pragmatics. Well, the thing that you have to know, or the thing that I have to uh, uh, tell you uh, today is that um, it is basically in relation with something theoretical. I know that you know, your master's is a, is, is a professional master's and it's a, it's, it's a hands-on kind of master's on translation and interpreting. But uh, it's very important to know some uh, theoretical background that would, in a way or another, facilitate your access to translation. Of course, uh, uh, you, uh, you, for sure, you have uh, something which relates to translation theories. And then uh, it's very important to have access to linguistics and to have access specifically to pragmatics because it's an area that would help you surmount possible difficulties as to some, um, let's say, texts. So let me uh, share with you some, uh, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, no? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, sir, we can. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. So, uh, so I called it Pragmatics and Translation, and Pragmatics and Translation, of course, is the title of the subject, right? Um, well, what we, what we will be talking about are the following seven elements, but um, I won't go into too much uh, uh, complexity and too many details. We'll be talking about definitions, We'll be um, just comparing pragmatics and other linguistic disciplines. I'll be talking about the cornerstones of pragmatic inquiry, pragmatics and communication skills, pragmatics and context, pragmatics and the tools of analysis and the relevance of pragmatics to translation. Of course, these are only, I mean, uh, bullet points. These are only some preliminary remarks and pre preliminary aspects to cover. And we'll go into details, obviously, in the, uh, in the lectures. Right, the definitions. Well, the first question people may ask what this, this pragmatics is about, right? And uh, basically, when it comes to uh, scientific research, we need to start with something um, let's say traditional as uh, like encyclopedic or dictionary definitions. And then we'll go to scholarly definitions, the definitions of the, the people that study it in a way, uh, pragmatics. I'll be doing the same thing. We'll be starting with the, the Oxford Companion to philosophy. For the Oxford Companion to philosophy, pragmatics is the study of language let me do some uh, on, on my screen. So pragmatics is the study of language which focuses attention on the users and the context of language use, rather than on reference, truth, or grammar, what people mean in a particular context. So if we have a, a key word to extract from this preliminary definition, that would be, uh, Context, language users, and language use. And uh, uh, the other thing also to be extracted from this definition is the fact that pragmatics has nothing to do with grammar. It has nothing to do with syntax. It has nothing to do with the uh, tree diagrams, for example, for those who are fearing linguistics because of syntax and because of phonology and morphology. One of the ways that pragmatics can be defined of is that uh, it says that it's, it's the way of how the context influences what is said, how the context influences what is said, which presupposes that we language speakers, whether we are speaking our L1 or whether we are speaking our L2, L3, L18, our, uh, generally our, uh, our, discourse, the way we speak and uh, what we say, it is generally influenced 
by our context. And context, you need to bear this in mind, is a very uh, crucial and, uh, um, let's say, relevant expression and concept in translation. Pragmatic study is the ways in which context contributes to meaning. So in this sense, meaning does not really emanate from um, dictionaries and from the way people speak. Meaning is constructed from the dictionary meaning. It is as well constructed by the context. Sometimes the same expression, when it is said in context A, means something. When it is said in context B, it means completely different meaning. <laughs> Scholarly definitions. Pragmatics, for some scholars, is needed if we want fuller, deeper, and generally more reasonable account of the human language behavior. Because uh, the language that we use to study, whether in our L1, L2, or L3, or whatever, is the language that exists in grammar, is the language that exists in literature, is the language that exists in dictionaries and encyclopedias. However, the added value, I would say, of pragmatics is that it allows us a much deeper, a much fuller account of human language behavior. Another definition of uh, uh, pragmatics said by some scholars is that it is the study of invisible meaning. You know what, invisible meaning, because at some point when we speak, like you and I, whether in Arabic or in French or in English or in Italian or in Spanish or whatever language you speak, sometimes the meaning which is embodied in the words and the expression is completely different from the meaning that I meant, this is the thing that I meant, right? Uh, let's say, uh, and if we just uh, shift into Arabic, uh, it means good morning, right? The invisible meaning in this way. And these two good mornings are different, although semantically, grammatically they are the same, but there is an invisible meaning which is in the second sentence and which cannot be treated um, similarly in the first sentence. Another uh, uh, definition of pragmatics is uh, by uh, David Crystal. Pragmatic study is the factors that govern our choice of language in social interaction. In social interaction and the effects of our choice on others. Here, pragmatics does not only handle the invisible meaning, but it handles also the way or our choices, our, I would say, strategic choices of language use in social interaction. Because, you know, there's a difference between um, um, interacting with your teacher, interacting with your parents, interacting with your sister, interacting with your brother. But basically, um, generally, human beings like you and I, we have some strategic ways to use language. And pragmatics is there to lay bare, to, I would say, uh, uh, um, to explore these strategies and the ways uh, uh, that are adopted by speakers like you and I when they govern their language in social context or in social interaction. Pragmatics, and we'll finish with this with the uh, definitions, is more concerned with the meanings that words in fact convey when they are used or with intended speaker meanings as it is sometimes referred to. So basically, pragmatics is focusing more or less on the conveyed meaning rather than the exact, uh, um, I would say, the exact words or the exact utterances and expressions. So, so far, we talked about 
definitions. We focused on uh, dictionary and encyclopedia definitions of pragmatics. Then we moved on and we talked about scholarly definition. The difference between the two is uh, one, which is, um, let's say, not really, it, the dictionary definitions are not really flexible because it's not in every couple of weeks we, uh, um, let's say, we um, dictionaries are published. But uh, the scholarly definitions are definitions that are emanating from research and studies in the area of language and in the area of languages. The key word so far of pragmatics is that it is different from other areas of linguistics. Pragmatics is, uh, the, the added value of pragmatics is that it adds uh, more into the, the way speakers like you and I strategically use language, right? Pragmatics and other disciplines of linguistics. I know that people are familiar with the, uh, um, people are familiar with, um, let's say, uh, syntax, uh, phonology and morphology. People are aware of semantics. Uh, they have it in the introduction to linguistics in the second year, and they have it also in the third year. Um, here I have just uh, 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 extracted uh, some differences between pragmatics and uh, semantics and syntax, right? The areas that you for sure know. Right. So uh, syntax, syntax, as you should know, this is the study of the relations between linguistic forms, how they are arranged in a sequence, which sentences are well formed. So the basic concern of syntacticians is the well formedness or the grammaticality versus the ungrammaticality of sentences, right? So this has nothing to do with the pragmatics. Pragmatics is not looking for language forms. It's not looking for the well-formedness of sentences. Semantics. Semantics is the study of the relations between linguistic forms, entities in the world. It's the study of how words connect to things. The objective meanings of words that can be found in dictionaries. And semantics is concerned with the world and sentence meaning. So basically, uh, uh, um, the main concern of people working in the area of semantics is that they just focus on uh, words, their meanings, and how they develop from one uh, year to the other one, right? Basically, in semantics, people talk about denotation and connotation what the word exactly means in real, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, language use, and what this word can uh, uh, connote uh, specifically in literature, in stylistics, in whatever. Pragmatics at some point was linked to semantics, but it's not necessarily just like semantics. So pragmatics, again, is the study of linguistic forms and their users. So here, pragmatics is linking language production to its speakers, because the way I use language is different from the way B uses language. And uh, the way I intend meaning or the way I encapsulate my message is different from uh, other people's way to express their meanings, right? or express the meanings that they meant. Pragmatics entails utterance meaning. An utterance can be defined as a word or sentence which is uttered by a speaker. Sometimes speakers use a, a whole paragraph to express themselves. Some other times it's just the one single utterance, including one single word, whereby people can transmit a whole message. Right. So after looking at, um, let's say, the definitions, the dictionary definitions, the scholarly definitions, and after comparing 
pragmatics with the areas of linguistics that you know, namely semantics and syntax, we've come out so far with an idea that pragmatics is different from the other areas of linguistics. It's not a subdiscipline of uh, semantics or syntax. But the main concern of pragmatics, the main concern of pragmatics is something that relates, um, let's say, uh, um, language, strategic use of language, and speakers. And uh, here, what we have come out so far with is that through an utterance, whether this utterance is including one word, two words, three words, or more, uh, uh, the meaning is transferred. And the job of people working in the area of pragmatics is to try to investigate the way this, mes this message was encapsulated in the address. Now we move on to uh, cornerstones of pragmatic inquiry. So uh, in pragmatics, there are four areas that are the basic areas of any research of any work in pragmatics. There are people who work The cornerstones are one, communication involves complex intentions. So uh, people who work in the area of pragmatics believe that in communication, there are, um, apart from the normal uh, mundane, ordinary, uh, simplistic uh, communication acts, there are some complex intentions, right? There are some complex intentions. Um, this reminds me of, a, of, a, of an interesting, uh, let's say, uh, comparison in Arabic. Uh, <clears throat> so, we have to say that 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 we have to These are complex intentions. These are complex intentions. For example, the common way now in Tunisia, we don't say that we say that you're a ski, or that you're a car, or that you're a car. We say that you're a car. For example, we say that you're a car. For example, 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 دمك خفيف uh, وقت عبد تقول له انت مفكيك it's completely the opposite right uh, عبد تقول له مفكيك in Tunisian Arabic uh, it's now pejorative it's now pejorative right and, and, and in, this, in this context we include uh, the notion of communication as involving complex intentions right because um, um, you know, we cannot really identify 100% the intention of the speaker. The question now to be raised here is, so if the intentions of the speaker are internalized in himself, in his mind, in his heart, how can I know? How can I know about, um, about uh, his complex intentions? My answer is, there are tools in pragmatics that are there and that are to be deployed in order to identify the speaker's intention. Another uh, 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 way to answer this question is that complex intentions, um, you can identify the intention of the speaker, um, of course, depending on the extent to which you know the speaker from the context that we are uh, uh, speaking in. Number two, after talking about uh, the fact that communication involves complex intentions, number two is that these communicative intentions have to be inferred, have to be, I would say, um, uh, smart, uh, uh, smartfully, let's say, uh, 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 explored in terms, of, uh, in terms of languages, right? So I need to know, I need to infer, I need to, um, let's say, detect, 
and intelligently detect the intention of the speaker. And of course, the answer to this is through certain tools, you can infer the intention of the speaker. These tools, we're going to see them in five minutes. Three, communication is governed by principles and maxims. So pragmatics investigates communication uh, as complex intention. Pragmatics also investigates the fact that communicative intentions have to be inferred. And number three, communication is governed by principles and maxims. Um, one of the things that uh, you may be asking, you, you may be asking yourself about is, um, do all speakers have complex intentions? The answer is no. Sometimes we use complex intentions. Sometimes we use strategic communication. Some of the times we just stick to the norms, to the principles, to the maxims. And here we have the third area of inquiry in pragmatics, which is uh, communication as governed by principles and maxims. So pragmatics does not only investigate in the intentions and the complex intentions of the speaker, but it also investigates the principles of communication. For example, we talked about uh, complex intentions in Tunisian Arabic, and uh, let's say we can talk about principles and maxims of politeness as it were to the English language. When uh, you want somebody to do something for you, you need to say, would you like, would you like by any chance have a, would you like by any chance have five dinars or 10 dinars? Would you like to lend me some? These are principles, meaning if you want to ask about something, you need to do it in a very polite way. We call it politeness, but in terms of grammar, we need to use would you or whatever, right? The fourth area of inquiry of pragmatics is the following. There's a fundamental distinction between explicit an implicit conveyors of information. So after one, two, three, the area of pragmatics is investigating or is trying to investigate the way communication works, the way people's intentions uh, work. And uh, we need to identify the explicit and the, the implicit way to deliver a message. Right? Um, let me give you an example. Um, look, for example, when, um, when teachers generally at the beginning of the year, they introduce their courses and their lectures and the way the, the assessment will be, they generally use uh, one of these two expressions. It's whether they say, you must work hard to succeed this year because of this, 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 and that. And the other choice of uh, uh, teachers is uh, we must work hard to succeed in this, 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 or that way. The difference, as you may notice, is between you and between uh, we. The you here is used by the speaker, and the speaker is feeling, it's, let's say, detached. The speaker doesn't really feel involved in the, uh, 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 in, in, in the teaching stuff. However, the choice of we have to work hard to succeed, the teacher is not part, is not going to work hard to succeed. Of course, the teacher can succeed through his courses, uh, the way he makes students, she makes students work hard. But uh, here, the teacher is not involved uh, at the end of the semester with some marks. But when the teacher involves himself with the students to work hard, he is in a way um, implicitly inviting students or he is implicitly being in the class and with the students. People working in pragmatics, they work on these specific aspects, namely references. In pragmatics, we call them diaxis. Right? So let me wrap up so far. We started with the definitions, dictionary definitions, 
encyclopedia definitions, then then with um, uh, encyclopedia definition, then scholarly definitions. Then now we talk about, um, let, let's say we talked about the differences between uh, pragmatics and the other areas of linguistics. Then we focused on pragmatics and we focused specifically on um, the area of expertise of pragmatics. So if, for example, syntax is working on uh, the grammatical structure of sentences, if semantics is working on the meaning of words and expressions, pragmatics is working on the speaker's intention and the way these intentions are delivered, whether implicitly or explicitly. Um, pragmatics is also working on uh, three major communication skills. Right? So of course, the question is, yes, we know now what pragmatics is. Second is, yes, we could just distinguish between syntax, uh, semantics, and pragmatics. Hmm. Good. And then um, the third would be, um, yes, now we know the, the intentions or the, um, the objectives of pragmatics, communication, uh, detecting the, uh, let's say, detecting the, uh, the intentions of the speaker, the implicit and the explicit. The question now, how can I do this? How can I or how can I explore people's uh, language in order to detect those intentions? In syntax, for example, we have some rules, right? There is a subject verb object, or there is a subject verb complement of the subject, or the, there is a uh, adjectival phrase or a verbal phrase or whatever. In pragmatics. We use or we focus on three specific areas in languages. One, using language for different purposes. You just focus on the use of language. Changing language according to the needs of the listener or situation. And number three, following rules, right? So these are the three basic areas where pragmatics is focusing. Pragmatics fo is focusing on the use of language for different purposes, how people greet, how people promise, how people inform, how people express satisfaction and dissatisfaction. And this is reminiscent of your English language curriculum in secondary and basic education, whereby uh, your focus in English was not on, uh, let's say, um, lectures in grammar or lectures in vocabulary, your focus was how to express likes, how to express dislikes and whatever. And this is, by the way, because of the influence of pragmatics. So the use of language for different purposes. So pragmatics is focusing on the use of language for different purposes. How people agree, how people promise, how people inform. And is there any difference when they greet in the morning or they greet in the afternoon? Number two, focus of pragmatics. Changing language according to the needs of the listener or situation, talking differently to a baby than to an adult, or speaking differently in a classroom than on a black playground, etc., etc. Pragmatics is uh, just there to locate any language change so that we know exactly when we speak in this way, ah, then there is a, 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 a change in language when we speak in this context or in that context. And then also, pragmatics is focusing on following the rules, how people follow rules for conversations and storytelling and whatever, right? <coughs> so, um, I, I will be focusing now on, uh, on, on context. Context is a very important entity in pragmatics, and it is also very important in 
uh, in translation. What we need to know is that pragmatics um, works in uh, four different contexts. And of course, in translation, one of the things that we have to take into consideration is the context. And here, scholars talk about four different contexts, physical context, epistemic context, linguistic context, and social context. And I dare say that any translator or any interpreter has to take into consideration this difference in the context. The physical context is the location of a given word, whether physical context or whether the place where you were talking about, uh, or uh, let's say the, um, the, the, the syntactic or the grammatical context. So the physical context is the location of a given word, the situation in which it is used, as well as the timing, all of which add a proper understanding of the words. Basically, when you translate, you need to take into account the use of certain words and the context which is surrounding it. Epistemic context. The epistemic context refers to what speakers know about the world, the cognitive, your cognitive knowledge. What a background knowledge is shared by the speakers is part of your epistemic knowledge. Linguistic context. The, the linguistic context refers to what has been said already in the utterance. So um, this would be, you know, for example, when you are translating a text or when you are interpreting in a conference, basically the area of the conference would help you frame the, uh, your, your interpretations or your translations. And the last is the social context. The social context refers to the social relationship among speakers and hearers. Let me now reformulate all the aspects that I talked about. We started with pragmatics. We defined what pragmatics is. Then we uh, tried to contextualize pragmatics in linguistics, in the area of linguistics. Then we moved on and we talked about how let's say, the main inquiries of pragmatics. And then we moved on and we said that in pragmatics, we focus on uh, the use of language, the change of language, and the context. And then we moved on and we are now talking about uh, context in general and how in pragmatics, it's the only area in linguistics that takes into account the context when it comes to language analysis and language use. Now, one of the basic questions, or the, the, the let's, we have another question, we have another question that you have to uh, to ask. But the, the question is now at this at this level. Um, yes, we know about pragmatics, and we know about this, and we know about that. And then, if I want to analyze an utterance, if I want to analyze or to study people's utterance. If I want to focus on people's utterances and try to uh, uh, analyze or interpret or try to identify their intentions, what shall I do? What are the tools that I am supposed to use? Um, in, uh, in semantics, if you are trying to find uh, the meaning of a word, you just open the dictionary or you go to Google, you Google the word and it brings in thousands and millions of websites and dictionaries so that you know about the word. Um, let's say if, uh, if, uh, if I were to analyze something grammatically and syntactically, I have some rules, right? I say that this sentence is ungrammatical or this uh, sentence is ill-formed according to this or that rule. The question is, what are the tools of pragmatics? How shall I identify, let's say, uh, the area, or how shall I identify the speaker's intention in a, in a sentence? Here is a preliminary list. People who work in the area of pragmatics deploy some of these tools, like diaxis, 
like implicature, like the relevance theory, like presupposition, like politeness and impoliteness, like speech acts. All of these are analytical tools used by people working in pragmatics to try to identify the speaker's intentions and the speaker's invisible meaning. Because as some scholars said in general, language betrays its speaker. Even if we try to conceive, even if we try to hide, there are some important aspects in what we say that can be detected via these tools. I would not go into details of these tools. We'll do them in the lecture, but this is the logical, I would say, this is the logical structure. We define, we see the area, and we know that there are tools that are used in order to identify, let's say, uh, in order to identify the intentions of the speaker. Now, some of you may have questions about, uh, well, all of this is theoretical. What has this to do with, uh, with translation? Are we supposed to get only theoretical stuff? My answer is yes and no. It's theoretical and it is important that you know about theory. It's just like you need to solve some of the problems that may arise in translation via the knowledge of translation theories. There are schools here, right? And in pragmatics, it's important to be familiarized with, the notion, with this notion, with this concept of pragmatics, and of course, with the tools of pragmatics. Not to analyze utterances and texts proper, but to make use of them while translating, right? It's very important to know, to be aware of pragmatics as an area that is very helpful to the context of translation. My last slide would be on uh, the relevance of pragmatics to translation, which is, which is shared by many scholars. By somebody who has uh, uh, written a book in 2019, it comes as no surprise that pragmatics and translation studies are closely interlaced as context is a crucial notion in both domains. So the common denominator among pragmatics and translation, translation studies is the notion of the context, because pragmatics says that context is very important to detect the meaning of the speaker. And in translation, it is very important to know about the context, you know, as, as, as Dr. Hamouda said earlier, to know about the background of the speaker, the background of the novel, for example, if you were to translate a novel, it's very important that you know the area, the background, before embarking in translation. Translation is controlled by both linguistic and extra-linguistic factors. So we have the linguistic, the meanings, of the words and of the expression and the extra linguistic factors. When we talk about the extra linguistic factors, we talk about context, the physical context, the social context, the uh, political context, right? Among the latter, there are, for instance, norms of use in the source and target lingua cultural community, the attitude of the translator towards these norms, the commissioner's requests, and the translator's profile and background. There's a difference between, for example, an ideologically convinced translator who is translating uh, or who is interpreting an area which is um, contrary to his or to her ideology. And from this stance, we can explain how the attitude or the profile and the background of the translator is important in, let's say, in, in having, let's say, some kind of impact on his or her translation. For translators, it is of the greatest importance to understand and locate words and phrases, phrases in specific contexts. In order to avoid misinterpretation, 
and hence mistranslation, it is essential to correctly identify the local context of that trance. And finally, Good argues that the relevance theory that we one day will be talking about contains the key to providing a unified account of translation. Translators must be able to recover intended meaning instantly and render content in a way that allows them to convey what they consider to be relevant aspects of the original, but may not resemble the original closely. <coughs> so, what we have done is the following. We have scratched over the surface of the area of pragmatics. The, the main uh, uh, intention or the main purpose behind this is to try to make you aware of the relevance of pragmatics to translation and to interpreting in general. The thing that I did today was the following. I have defined pragmatics. I have defined the area in terms of uh, dictionary meaning, encyclopedia meaning, scholarly definitions, uh, its uh, relationship with other areas in linguistics and its differences with other areas in linguistics. I have also talked about pragmatics as an area of research. And I have talked about the fact that pragmatics is focusing on specific aspects. We talked about communication skills. We talked about context. And we jumped on the fact that context is a common denominator between translation and pragmatics. What we said also is that pragmatics is including some strategic tools in order to identify the intentions of the speakers. These tools, I have enumerated six or seven that we're going to discover in the lectures. The last aspect that we talked about is the kind of relationship that exists between pragmatics and translation. And we said that, or some scholars said that Basically, the notion of the context shared by pragmatics and translation is a very important area that would gather, let's say, uh, 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 would render you understand um, deeply and fully the uh, um, um, texts and uh, translated texts in general. And uh, we talked also about the relevance of pragmatics to translation. And uh, we said that some scholars said that the notion, the, the area of pragmatics is very important because it helps identify, it helps better interpret and better translate and better explore the TA or the, the TL uh, context. Right. Uh, so I know that it's a kind of, uh, it's a kind of, um, what, what I call it? It's very difficult to introduce a, a one semester course in 20 or 25 minutes, but I hope that at least you got the gist, you got the, um, let's say, um, some kind of an overall idea about uh, pragmatics and of course about how pragmatics can be helpful to you as uh, specialists in translation. Thank you. The floor is yours, Dr. Sabah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Meluli. Can you please stop sharing your screen? Thank you. I will. And allow me to ask everyone to turn on his camera, and her camera, please. <laughs> Who is Galaxy Grand, please?
sorry, I am facing some challenges uh, with the Zoom. I can. I hope that you can hear me well now. We yes. 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 yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you well. Great. So I think there is uh, someone whose presence is uh, not pleasant, and I would like to ask you all to turn on your camera. Okay. Uh, Rehab, Sarah, Sufyan, Ahlam, Tasneem, and then. Uh, Ines, Hajri, yes. Khawla Uni, Khawla? Oui, monsieur. Yes, thank you. Shayma, Ker... Shayma, Yahya, Taqwa, Zainab, Slah, Farah, Ahmed, Sara, Wali, Marwa, Shayma, Sana, Shayma, etc. Dora, Ikram, Tizawi, Nisreen, Shada, 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 thank you. Uh, Juda, Mesa, Camilia, Alami, Alami. So, can you please uh, rename yourselves with your full names? And I've already uh, shown you how to do that. Please, can you go put the cursor above your name? and then rename with the two boxes um iqbal fatma reem lenovo k6 okay Now, uh, Ayman, Ben, yes, Siwar, Zainab, Duha, Hadami, Sirin, Jabbar, Salim. Islam, Aguila, Salsabil, Juda, Aqbal. Aqbal, Saidani. Reem, Salsabil, Hadami, etc. Mesa, Tarak, Dora, Salhi, Dunya, Munebusif, Arish, Wael, Benali, Wisal, Miriam. Okay, Emna, Reem, Arish, Hadami. Okay, I think we are good now. Okay, any questions to Dr. Maluli? By showing hands, please. Thank you very much again, Dr. Maluli, for um, insightful presentation on uh, pragmatics and translation and uh, addressing um, subjects that are of much interest to the uh, novice translators and interpreters. Uh, any questions to uh, Dr. Maluli? You have the floor, ladies and gentlemen. Sir? Yes. Morning. Please, uh, our classmate Zainab Nebi, Kharjad Mani, how to have the Taqbal? Okay, I'm going to check. So, Le Nouveau, I don't know who is this one. So, I would like uh, Le Nouveau to uh, tell me to disclose his or her identity so that I can accept him or her. Yes, please. Uh, what is the axis? And this is a question to uh, Dr. Maluli. Uh, Okay, uh, any other question? Let's take a couple of questions. So I, I have a question to you, uh, Dr. Maluli, on interpretation or misinterpretation. What tips can you give to students of translation and interpreting to avoid the pitfalls of uh, 
misinterpretation uh, uh, and getting the thing wrong. Uh, so, uh, any uh, from the pragmatic perspective, I would say how to have access to the real and genuine intentions of speakers. Uh, uh, is it only enough to do s uh, enough search or uh, are there any other tools? I know that you will be uh, covering those tools over the course of your lecture, but can you give us some hint uh, on uh, the, um, let's say, specific tools to avoid the pitfalls of misinterpretation? Thank you. Right, thank you. I have, uh, so far I have two questions, one about the axis, one about uh, misinterpretation uh, and, and, and the tips. One, um, <coughs> the axis. Well, the axis means uh, anything that relates to reference. When we, when we refer to people, when we refer to objects, when we refer to places, generally we make use of certain references, certain, uh, they're called dialectic. Uh, uh, um, references that are, um, let's say, um, that are very revealing of the intentions or of the degree of involvement of the speaker. This is at this level, right? We we have a whole lecture on on the axis, but just uh, as as it is said uh, in, in in Arabic, then I would say it's it it relates to reference. You know, when we refer to uh, to a place or to a person, just through our reference, there is an intention which is uh, uh, um, there. Um, I don't like him or uh, I don't... Uh, um, um, or, or I hate him or whatever, but it's through my reference you got the meaning, let's say. This is, this is the work, or approximately, in terms of the access. As for the misinterpretation and, and the pitfalls of, of misinterpretation, I would say that uh, knowing about the speaker or knowing about the writer, about his... Uh, um, about the context where he writes or where he speaks, about uh, the social context, about the political context, about many, the, about the context with capital C is very important so that people would not uh, misinterpret a text or misinterpret the, 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 the intentions of a, of, a, of a text because after all the speaker it's through the intent, through his text, or through his uh, written or oral text, that his intentions are uh, uh, um, included. Um, I would say, to what extent uh, how would I know the context? I would say, the more you know about the context, the more you avoid these pitfalls, right? And uh, for those, for example, who are professionals in uh, in the area of trans uh, translating and interpreting. They know, for example, knowing about, for example, if you go to, to interpret or to translate the kind of um, to work, let's say, in, in interpreting, I think one of the basic uh, things that you have to know is you know about the event, you know about uh, the people that are going to attend, then you need to do your own research about uh, the event itself so that it facilitates your task while interpreting or while translating. Thank you, Dr. Maluli. Uh, we have a request uh, or a question coming from um, Muataz Hameda. Please, can you unmute yourself and uh, state or raise your question orally? Thank you. Muataz? Hello? So, I move on to uh, Mohammed Badreddin Al Faqih. Do you like to state your question orally? Mohammed? 
Thank you, Professor. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please. I would ahead. like to ask. I would like to ask Professor Sofian if he can explain to me the, in one in one slide when he was talking about the tools. He, he mentioned implicature, I think, but explicature was not mentioned. Although I think that they are so interlaced with each other. He, he can please make me understand why implicature was mentioned and explicature was not. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Ahlam. Uh, she also uh, raised a question in the chat box. Do you like to express that question orally? Yes, sir. Do you hear Please me? Go ahead. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. Please. My question is how to challenge the aspect of the speaker's intention during, uh, during simultaneous uh, translation. I mean, uh, you are, for instance, uh, translate, um, let's say, discussion, uh, and then uh, the speaker, uh, like the, the example gave by Mr. Uh, Sofian uh, when he said, uh, uh, do we need, uh, in, in this case, do we need uh, to explain to our uh, hearer uh, what is meant by uh, the speaker or uh, just adopt the same uh, facial uh, uh, gestures or a tone? Thank you. Dr. Maluli, if you don't mind, can we take um, two or three more questions and in, 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 in uh, 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 first perhaps on the last round and then you address them together for the interest of time because we run short of time. Uh, thank you very much for accepting uh, this uh, format. Uh, uh, Yahya, please. Okay. Shayma, yeah, is yeah. any? Yes, Mr. Hamoud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Yahya. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, sorry, uh, I had to unmute myself. Uh, my question was about uh, practical application because um, well, first I would like to thank our. Yeah, yeah, we, we, there are issues with the audio input, your audio input. Uh, Can is you speak it better now? now? Yes, much better. Is it thank better? You. Okay. Uh, thank you for this uh, clear and uh, uh, important presentation. Uh, I would like to suggest doing some uh, practical activities about how to use these tools in order to uh, deduce, uh, 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 to get the meaning from the context, how to use these tools. Maybe if you can get some short and simple activities to get a better grab of uh, the pragmatic uh, I'm wondering, Dr. Maluli, did you get the question? Not exactly. Uh, okay, we'll come back to you uh, if there is time, or I'm going to read it from the chat box. Uh, Dr. Maluli, the, he has uh, written his question in the chat box. Can you please refer to the chat box? And then, uh, yeah, yeah, let me go back hello Rada? yeah i Excuse would like me. to ask uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I will put you in, in, in on the list uh, i will give you the floor in a moment uh, mohammed ah, okay. mohammed salah okay hello so my question is as follows how do we deal with a text that lacks context can we still refer to pragmatic theories or concepts in such a scenario. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, yes, Rada. Please go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask if in this semester we're going to only focus on the pragmatics as meanings of the speaker, what he wants to, uh, what he wants to say, or his intention behind uh, using the words. And I just want 
to know whether if, if we're going to focus on more uh, on meanings, on pragmatics, or we're going to focus on other elements um, through it. I mean, that's my question here. Thank you. Thank you, Rada. We have uh, um, two minutes left, and I would like to give the floor to Marwa Maafi. Last question. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask if it is easier for uh, interpreters to apply uh, the, pra the pragmatic principles. Uh, um, is it easier for uh, interpreters than uh, for translators to apply the uh, principles of uh, pragmatics in the sense that interpreters can profit by the speaker's tone, uh, gestures, facial expression, uh, the context is also um, clearer for uh, interpreters. So um, is it uh, easier for them? Thank you. So I'm going to read uh, the question uh, raised by Yahya Buneb, uh, trying to quote, can we try some pragmatics activities, activities in pragmatics, and you give us uh, your feedback so it is a question. Uh, practical work, maybe sentences or short texts from casual speeches or political speeches, and we try to look for meaning by using the tools you gave us. So this is the question of Yahya Buneb. Uh, without further ado, uh, I give you the floor, Dr. Maluli, for um, just uh, closing remarks and uh, addressing the questions raised. Thank you very much. You have the floor. Over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, as to the uh, as to the first question, uh, making the distinction between implicature and explicature, uh, explicature or, or explicature rather, I would say that um, back to the uh, back to the definition to the preliminary definition of pragmatics, the main uh, purpose is to try to find out the intentions of the speaker. Explicature basically talks about the ex what, is explicit, what is explicitly said. And you know, what is explicitly said is not, um, I would say, um, is not relevant to the inquiry in pragmatics because um, it's, a, it's through the implicit that pragmatics finds its way, right? Uh, question number two, uh, how in, in interpreting, how did I know or how would I know the intentions of the speaker? Well, I would say uh, I said something earlier. The more you know about the context, the more you know about the people, the know, the know you know about, let's say, uh, the event itself that you are working in, the more your translation, your interpreting would be appropriate. Of course, we are talking about a continuum, right? You know what being by a continuum? <coughs> a continuum means that there is no zero translation and there is no 100% translation. We are just moving in this continuum. There are people who can translate, but their translation is a kind of a 20%, 30% of the intentions of the speaker. And there are people who just reach the 90 to 99 to 100%. So there is no zero translation and 100% translation. There is something in between. This something in between is supposed to be uh, uh, better um, regarding our identification of the context, of our, um, let's say, uh, knowledge of the body language and the synchronization between the body language and the words expressed and the more you know about these areas, the more your translation would be as perfect as possible, right? Question number three, practice. Yes, we will have some practice at the beginning of the course and at the end of the course so that we can identify specific aspects of the, uh, 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 of, of, of the area of expertise of, uh, uh, of uh, pragmatics. Question number four, so if you don't have any context, uh, can, we, can we identify the text? You know, um, uh, when, we, when I talked about pragmatics, I, talked, uh, I, I didn't say, and I have never said, and I will never say that pragmatics has solutions 
and has tools to identify all possible intentions in the world, right? Or possible intentions of the speakers, right? What pragmatics is advocating is that it advocates that it has some tools to identify the intentions of the speaker. Sometimes we can uh, read exactly what the speaker is saying. Some of the times we can overinterpret what the speaker is saying. But here comes the, um, I would say, the, um, the, the, the translators or the, lingu the linguists' uh, uh, expertise in the area. So I would say, as an answer, the lack of context or the lack of uh, any kind of context in relation with the text, whether it's oral text or a written text, would make it difficult, as it were, to the translator and to the interpreter to handle difficult issues in the text. You know, in translations in general and in interpreting, um, you can go for 90%, it's very easy. But these 10, 15, 20% that are very important uh, uh, let's say, uh, expressions and utterances in the whole discourse that render your life difficult, right? Um, question number five, I, I did not get it appropriately. Um, um, the, the, um, what, well, one of the students talked about uh, meanings or whatever, but, but, I, but I didn't get it exactly, right? Uh, um, and, and the final question is, is it easy to apply uh, the principles of uh, pragmatics in interpreting and in translation? I would say nothing is easy and nothing is too difficult to reach. My rule is the following. The more you know, the more you, uh, uh, you are aware of the mechanics of languages, of the mechanics of communication, whether it is through face-to-face -face communication or through body language, you, uh, 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 you can uh, um, develop an understanding and you can develop your competence as to surmount possible difficulties that may rise here and there in your career as a, as a translator or as, as an interpreter, right? I think uh, the rationale behind the choice of pragmatics in this program is to get you aware of this, is to get you aware that the uh, translation is not only uh, translating uh, uh, Ali went to school, ila No, this is not, this or this should not be the main purpose of the program. The main purpose of the program or as, as areas like pragmatics and other linguistic disciplines is uh, for you as a translator to know that when it comes to language, there are many disciplines that you have to take into account and that would help you develop your career. Because uh, the more you translate, the more you are aware of uh, the mechanics of language use, the more you know about pragmatics, the more you know about semantics, uh, in general, the more that would be facilitating your task as a translator. I think I'm done with the question. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, uh, you. Dr. Meluli, for speaking to us this morning, uh, for your stimulating presentation on pragmatics and translation. And I uh, truly believe that pragmatics is at the heart of uh, the work of the translator or the interpreter, because we uh, are not parrots. Uh, um, let's say trans making the transfer of uh, words or core meanings of uh, of items, lexical items, but rather we uh, interpreters, the community of translators and interpreters, we dig deep into the uh, context to look for the uh, the real. Uh, uh, contextual meaning and try to have access to contextual cues to render what is intended. Intentions are very hard to access sometimes. Uh, that's why we need some tools. And I'm really very glad that uh, Dr. Meluli has accepted our invitation to uh, teach this subject, pragmatics, 
uh, and pragmatics and translation uh, for uh, the students of translation and interpreting. Thank you very much. Uh,